Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and today I'm gonna make a poke toad with a great big tongue, and an unlucky trainer. Right out the gate, if I'm making a big bulbous toad-like beast, then I really need to start by making a big ball of aluminium. Then I can wrap it in a thin layer of clay, which I'll poke and prod until it all resembles a grey inverse baked potato. All I need to do then is add some texture, however you're off your head if you think I'm going to add all that texture by hand. I'm far too lazy for that, which means it's time to make a tool. I've made a number of texture tools already on this channel, and while any of them would work perfectly fine for this model, I wanted to make a new one to pad out the video and rake in more of that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Plus it lets me add tryptophobia to the tags. With my roller in hand and my potato in the other hand, I can start to gently caress the surface until my potato is covered in a fine layer of itty bitty warts and bumps. All good reptilian textures have a lot of cuts and scores in the surface, so I'm going to add some of my own by wrapping my dragon egg in cling film and then gently scoring it with a knife blade. The cling film helps keep the cuts from being too sharp, and once it's removed, I'm left with a lovely, warty lump of a slightly scarred toad belly. That goes into the oven to cure while I get to work making another grey tato, albeit this time slightly misshapen. You know those wonky veg boxes you can buy at the shop? It's like that except grey and made out of clay. I'll smash this onto the tip of my freshly cured warty ball, blend it all in, then drill a couple of holes for wire legs. Then it's back to the bulking, and before I add any more of that texture, I want to make sure Lickitung's tail is extra wrinkly and fat, so I'm gonna go ham with the big chunky wormy dealies. Once they're all in place, I can start to smooth and blend them in so they look like they're part of the body, then I can get to work adding a tail extension to bring the overall shape a bit closer to the original design. Finally, with all the various parts of my tail anatomy in place, I'll give it a final smoothing before hitting it with the tryptophobia inducing texture roller, followed by the old cling film and knife trick. That's not a knife, that's a spoon. <laughs> I see you've plied knifey spoony before. Then it's time to give this thick tailed boy some adequately thick thighs which I'll make by adding more and more lumps of clay until I think it's just about right. The trick here is just to keep adding clay because when it comes to supporting a body of this girth you really can't have too much leg. Once I think I've got enough leg I'll give it a quick smoothing before moving on to making a single thumbnail sized toenail. I'll bake this in the oven to cure it, then I can jam it into the tip of my toad's toes before building up the surrounding area to blend it all in. Then it's back to my holy roller before getting to work making a great big bulbous toad gob. Of course this big gob needs a neck to attach to, so I'll lay down some lumpy clay foundation so that I can attach a kind of reptile looking upper jaw. This then gets blended into the aforementioned neck foundation before adding a matching bottom portion of my jaw. His neck's not quite rolly enough, so some more wormy dealies will thicken up his already substantial gullet and some wrinkles around the top of his head will help to blend the top and bottom of the torso together. I'll use my clay scoopy dealie to remove the majority of the mouth from inside the mouth, then my ball styluses will help to reshape and reform the head, pushing it ever closer to a somewhat recognizable creature. Now because this particular Lickitung is going to be swallowing the remnants of an unlucky black gloved Pokemon trainer, I figured it's worth taking the time to make the inside of his mouth nice and gnarly looking. This is mostly achieved by poking and prodding with various ball styluses until it's unsettlingly fleshy looking. Otherwise with the inside of my mouth looking bad, which is good, I can poke some shallow holes to drop some beady little eyeballs into, then build up the rest of the head shape. I'll make sure to give his eyes lots of wrinkles so as to ensure the existence of his nictitating membranes, then I'll poke some big breathing holes in the front of his face before adding some random lumps and dips and hitting it all with some ever important texture roller. Now at this point I decided that while he's got a pretty chunky neck it's not nearly chunky enough so I'm gonna add some great big vocal sacs and extra thick blobs of clay to the underside of his jaw until his head is roughly the size of his body. This all of course gets some texturizing, then I'll tickle the tips of his lips with some added texture before getting to work making his little T-Rex arms. Much like a single nailed toes, his arms only have a single claw which I pre-baked off camera and jammed into the tips of his arms. 
I'll then add some pre-texture mini wrinkles followed by post mini wrinkle texturing before coming back through and adding copious wrinkles and fat rolls all around the arms, legs, and tail connections, as well as some choice wrinkling around the rest of his body. Otherwise, once all my freshly rolled wrinkles have been texturized, it's time to make a prehensile murder tongue. I'll start with a big lump of clay that I can roll and pinch until it's a thick flatworm of clay. I'll then embed a length of armature wire into the middle of my tongue, which will help me to give the tongue a bit of shape and support it while it's baking. Some more clay gets added on until I've got an appropriately tongue-shaped shape upon which I can start to add the texture. I'll start by smoothing the entire surface out, then drawing the dividing line down the center of the tongue and pressing the clay until it's got a bit more of a central dip. Then I can fold and bend the tongue until I've got a nice action pose and a series of progressively smaller ball styluses will help to add the initial tongue texture. The tongue then gets jammed into the mouth and once it's nice and secure, I can start to add the finer surface details. The tongue is going to very much be the central focus of this particular model, so I want to take the time to make it look as realistic as possible. Otherwise, with my tongue in place, that's the sculpting finished, which means it's time to paint, which means it's time to prime. With my albino base coat in place, it's easy enough to start building up the layers of pink. A nice thin layer of watered down pink will be my base coat, and I'll follow that up by strategic sponging of slightly lighter shades of pinks to help break up some of the one tone pink coloring. I'll then follow that up by hitting it with a nice light pink dry brush to help highlight all the bumps and warts and excessive texturing I did during the sculpting. Finally, a quick sponging of an almost white pink on the tips of the wrinkles and rolls, and I can get to work giving the inside of the mouth a series of reds, pinks, purples, and blues until it's kind of mouth fleshy, then I'll get to work making my way through a series of reds and pinks on the tongue. At this point, I've sponged everything else, so in keeping with tradition, a bit of sponging on the tongue to close it out before moving on to my fingers and toes. My quartet of nails gets an initial bone white base coat, before then tickling the tips with a white wet blend to add a little bit of gradient. I'll then mix up a little yellow and bone white to give me a slightly yellowish bone white color that I can then use to add the rounded markings on Lickitung's chest as well as the circles on his knees and a couple tiny dots on his palms. Last but not least, his eyeballs get a basic black base coat followed by a coating of UV resin to make him extra beady looking and it's time to set Lickitung aside so I can get to work making a swamp. I'll start with an MDF disc and give it a nice coat of black paint. Now any good swamp needs mud, and to make my mud, there are three key ingredients. Hole filler, brown paint, and glossy Mod Podge. And a mixing cup. First thing is to fill the cup with an appropriate amount of vanilla ice cream, then add lots of chocolate sauce, and a sprinkle of Mod Podge. And once you mix it all together, you're left with a delicious looking cup of coffee colored goop. And to add a little bit of texture, I'm going to dump in some ground up plant debris. My mixture is then ready to get slapped onto the base and spread out until the whole surface is covered. This particular hole filler will cure up to 75 millimeters deep, so I can apply it nice and thick without worrying that it won't cure. I'll add a little surface detritus by way of more ground up tree bark and a little bit of foliage before finally sticking my lick -a tongue in place. The hole filler will harden around his feet, keeping him nice and secure, but before it does that, I'll brush a bit of mud up onto his legs and tail. Otherwise, before we call this one good, I need to make a trainer. Fortunately, I don't need to make much of a trainer, since the plan is to have my hapless victim hanging out of the side of my lick -a tongues mouth, which means I really only need to make an arm. Not only that, but I don't really need to add a great deal of detail to set arm, since I randomly and totally unrelated to any character at all, decided that said arm will be wearing a full arm length black glove. Again, in a totally unrelated design choice, I figured maybe this particular trainer would have a history of trouble with this particular lick -a tongue so I'm going to make a teeny tiny pokeball to drop at its feet, as if to imply that maybe this was a failed attempt at summoning an already caught paralysis toad. Painting the arm is nice and easy since, you know, it's just 
black on black with a little gray dry brush for highlighting, and the Pokeball gets standard Pokeball styling before getting dropped into the mud in front of Lickitung's feet. And the arm gets attached, so it's hanging out the side of Lickitung's mouth. And I can add the final finishing touches, starting with a coat of high gloss varnish on the tongue and inside the mouth, followed by some extra goopy drooly bits by way of Uhu. This is a transparent adhesive that I found works exceptionally well for goopy drooly bits. Since it dries clear, it can be built up in layers, and if you work back and forth or poke it with a toothpick, you can get some really gnarly, slimy saliva strings. Otherwise, once my glue's dried, that's us finished here and onto the glamour shots. Lick a tongue, I choose you! As always, a huge shout out to the best patrons on the internet, and a very special shout out to the newest of them, Josh Gorst, Lily, Aben Waters, Quinn, Adam Beeston, Chester Humbert, Oscar Ostos, Nerd Kink, Riley Rising, Sassy, S. Freezy, Start Night 7436, Metal Mummy 00, Mark Jackson, J and C and Schmunchkins, Crowley, and Zachary Wood. You are the big pink body toad out of which this channel's prehensile tail of a tongue extends. As always, do the thing and hit the button and do that other thing and etc. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers.